right, so I chose this the Challenger address video, the Challenger disaster address video, simply because um, most recently I've been very intrigued by what's going on with SpaceX and space exploration and um, all you know all that's going on there. And being our current situation, we spent quite a bit of time out at Melbourne Beach in Cape Canaveral, and uh, most recently, you know, been doing our best to witness one of the uh, the Falcon 9 launches. We still haven't been able to witness it live in person. Um, the Challenger disaster, I wasn't even born yet, I don't think, but for this to happen, it really shocked the world. As a matter of fact, that uh, the ultimate sacrifice was given on the frontier of space. So this really appealed to me. Because this is something that, has, that this was going on before I was born. It's just interesting that something of this magnitude we're putting such em emphasis on and um, really making a lot of progress in space exploration and uh, other planetary development and so on. So I chose this simply because the speech really resonated with me and I believe that it, it's reading it, having the, the script, it really helped me to keep in mind that it's okay to pause in between words and gather your thoughts and also to allow the audience to consume your words. So that helps to refra refrain from stuttering and uh, also uh, ahs and oohs and uh and the you know those little filler words so i think having this assignment with the speeches and seeing how presidents and other popular social leaders or what or what have you have delivered speeches really helps to emulate how they have delivered their speeches the pauses that they use the inflection and in voices the body language and a number of other things that make public speaking very comfortable and allows the speaker to have confidence to deliver their message with clarity. So I really enjoyed doing the research on this project. I will do all that I can to continue to enjoy this and take it to the next level. So thank you and enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, I plan to speak to you tonight to report on the State of the Union, but the events of earlier today have led me to change those plans. Today is a day of mourning and remembering. Nancy and I are pained to the core by the tragedy of the Shuttle Challenger. We know we share this pain with all of the people of our country. This is truly a national loss. Nineteen years ago, almost to the day, we lost three astronauts in a terrible accident on the ground. But we've never lost an astronaut in flight. We've never had a tragedy like this. But they, the Challenger 7, were aware of those dangers, but overcame them and did their jobs brilliantly. We mourn the seven heroes, Michael Smith, Dick Scobie, Judith Resnick, Ronald McNair, Ellison Unazika, Gregory Jarvis, and Christy McAuliffe. We mourn their loss as a nation together. For the family of the seven, we cannot bear, as you do, the full brunt of this tragedy, but we feel the loss, and we're thinking about you so very much. Your loved ones were daring and brave, but they had that special grace, that special spirit that says, give me a little challenge, and I'll meet it with joy. They had a hunger to explore the universe and discover its truths. They wished to serve, and they did. They served all of us. We've grown used to wonders of this century. It's hard to dazzle us. But for 25 years, the United States space program has been doing just that. We've grown used to the idea of space, and perhaps we forget that we've only just begun. We're still pioneers. They, the member of the Challenger crew, were pioneers. And I want to say something to the school children of America who are watching the live coverage of the shuttle's takeoff. I know it's hard to understand, but sometimes painful things like this happen. It's all part of the process of exploration and discovery. It's all part of taking a chance and expanding man's horizon. The future doesn't belong to the faint-hearted, it belongs to the brave. The Challenger crew was pulling us into the future and will continue to follow them. I've always had great faith in and respect for our space program, and what happened today does nothing to diminish it. We do not hide our space program. We do not keep secrets and cover things up. We do it all up front and in public. 
That's the way freedom is, and we wouldn't change it for a minute. We'll continue our quest in space. There will be more shuttle flights and more shuttle crews, and yes, more volunteers, more civilians, more teachers in space. Nothing ends here. Our hopes and our journeys continue. I want to add that I wish to talk to every man and woman who works for NASA or worked on the mission and tell them your dedication and professionalism have moved and impressed us for decades and we know of your anguish and we share it. There's a coincidence today. On this day, 390 years ago, the great explorer, Sir Francis Drake, died aboard a ship off the coast of Panama. In his lifetime, the great frontiers were, were the oceans, and historians later said, he lived by the sea, he died on it, and was buried in it. Well, today, we can say of the Challenger crew, their dedication was like Drake's, complete. The crew of the Space Shuttle Challenger honored us by the manner in which they lived their lives. We will never forget them, nor the last time we saw them. This morning, as they prepared for their journey and waved goodbye and slipped the surly bonds of Earth to touch the face of God, thank you.